What's going on, everyone? So we got a news and update in regard to Gabe Vincent. Uh, so he will be out versus the Orlando Magic. Uh, that's the upcoming game tomorrow, uh, which the Lakers will take on Orlando and begin that sort of Florida trip. Uh, and he won't be reevaluated uh, for two weeks. So we will be without Gabe Vincent for at least two weeks. Now, this hurts because Jared Vanderbilt is out. And Jared Vanderbilt is our best on-ball defender. He's likely out for roughly about another week. Um, they said he would be reevaluated uh, two weeks. Uh, that was about a week and some change ago. So we're still about a week away from a potential return of Jared Vanderbilt. Him and his defense is greatly needed. Um, you know, we've been solid, but not to the level that we need to be. And Jared Vanderbilt just makes up for so much of just the Lakers' defensive struggles, right? I mean, we saw it last year. Lakers went from, like, middle of the pack to immediately number one as soon as they got Jared Vanderbilt. And it's because of all the ground he covers, how much he's able to impact uh, the basketball court, right? Anthony Davis, his ability to basically defend the entire court is just massive, right? You see AD at times looking like he's defending three or four guys at once. Well, Jared Vanderbilt gives you that same uh, defensive versatility and flexibility, right? You have him who basically can defend one through five uh, in spots, and he's also a guy that we see cover so much ground. How many times have we seen Jared Vanderbilt on one side of the court and immediately, you know, teleport <laughs> to the to the other side and then he's back to the other side and then going and defending in the middle and just the ground that he covers is ridiculous. And so to be missing Jared Vanderbilt and then to follow that up with missing Gabe Vincent, uh that hurts. Now, Gabe Vincent isn't the defender that Jared Vanderbilt is by any stretch of the imagination. But what he is, is our sole point of attack guard, right? He's the guy that can, basically you can throw on uh, multiple positions as well and just provide some ball pressure uh, throughout the course of a game. And, you know, ideally he gets back to hitting shots. He's really struggled shooting the basketball, which is a bit of a concern, uh, which I've talked about before because even in Miami last year he really struggled shooting the basketball during the regular season but then in the playoffs is where he spiked right he ended up getting back to that like 38 to 40 percent range um obviously that would be great if he could do that in the playoffs uh, for us and be one of those guys that kind of take that next step once they get to the playoffs but we could also use him uh, offensively over the course of the regular season Right, at least some consistency. I don't necessarily need him to go and give you, you no know, eighteen or twenty a game or anything like that. But it'd be nice to see him, you know, just give us at least nine to twelve points, something like that. Right on occasion, you know, dish out a couple assists, play some defense. I mean, he's not a great playmaker, but the Lakers didn't acquire him for that. They acquired him for that three and D style point guard that usually has success alongside a LeBron James. I think of like a George Hill, uh, uh, um, Avery Bradley, Mario Chalmers, Norris Cole, like guys like that who can get after it on the defense side of the basketball, uh, apply good ball pressure, kind of take some pressure off of Anthony Davis when you know, your guards aren't getting just blown by every possession. And just give that tenacity, especially when, you know, you end up losing a guy like Dennis Schroeder who provided that, right? Um, you know, I've talked about how Dennis Schroeder, his upside is a lot higher than Gabe Vincent, right? Like when Dennis Schroeder was on, I mean, he was easily a 20 plus a game guy, right? But Gabe Vincent is a better shooter. He hasn't been right now. <laughs> He's really, again, struggled mightily. He's like something ridiculous, like one of 15 from three, uh, which is, is that's not good and that's not going to cut it. But um, you got to imagine that once he gets back to, to being that knockdown shooter that we know he's capable of being, then he is a better shooter than Dennis Schroeder is. Uh, neither of them are great playmakers, right? But again, you got LeBron James, D'Angelo Russell. Those two guys are guys that can really make plays for you. And he could, he could still get you some assists. Could still make the simple passes, still you know, impact the game, um, but it's just his defense. So now, you know, you're missing Jared Vanderbilt, 
and you're missing Gabe Vincent, who are two of your better point of attack players, and one is a guard, one is a sizable forward, it, it just it, it hurts. It hurts bad, right? The Lakers could use those two guys um, over the course of the season. Now, I wonder how much of this is like just precaution because it's early in the season. You know, like if this was the playoffs, would both of these guys be playing right now? Is, or is this just one of those things where it's like, you know, hey, like, you know, we 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 want to be cautious. We don't want to run the risk. We've only played five games this year. Let's kind of right the ship and keep things uh, afloat until they're able to return. Uh, that just means more Max Christie, which a lot of people uh, were really rooting for. Max Christie really struggled shooting the basketball in his first game and his debut, uh, but showed that defensive intensity, which is what you want to see. So hopefully he can provide uh, some of that uh, just point of attack pressure as well as just the defensive side of the basketball at least for the Lakers. And then Cam Reddish has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, that guy has been absolute A1 uh, when it comes to just defense side of the basketball. And he's having like literal superstar assignments. And he's holding his own, being aggressive, being a physical, using his size and his length to really just impact uh, their shots, and that's all you could do, right? Some of these guys, Kevin Durant, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, those guys, they're going to get their shots regardless. They're going to get their 20-plus points regardless. But it's about just making things difficult, kind of, you know, instead of them going and giving you 27, maybe they give you 25, and that could be the difference between you winning and losing the game because you're making those shots a lot tougher. Or, you know, they they yeah, they get you, maybe they still get you 30, but instead of shooting, you know, 50% from the field, they shot you know, 42% from the field. Again, that could be the difference between you winning and losing a game. Um, but hopefully Bando is back sooner rather than later. Um, Torian Prince, we still have no word on that, right? He was kind of a, a last minute, like literal game time scratch. Uh, it wasn't something that there was even news for until it actually happened. Um, and apparently he was having those issues during warmups, getting ready for that game. So hopefully he's back because that just is another three and D style guy that we could really use. A guy that has been a starter for us in place of Jared Vanderbilt and has been pretty good, little inconsistent, but still has, has had some really nice games, some really nice moments for the Lakers and you know, as well as Rui Hachimura, right? So you're talking about the Lakers missing four of their, you know, eight or nine key rotation players. Anytime you're missing that, you, you, you run the risk of having that struggle, right? But it was nice to see the depth step up for the Lakers once we got to the uh, once we got to the Clipper game because you saw Cam Reddish and Max Christie and you know Austin Reeves finally coming into his own. D'Lo was fantastic, right? Um, Christian Wood, remarkable. Right, that three big lineup, all of that stuff. I think, um, yeah, you, know, you you have the roster that you have for these purposes, right? You got four key guys out, three of the four are arguably your three best defenders, not named Anthony Davis. No, it, your, your defense is gonna hurt a little bit, right? But hopefully, they're able to continue to weather the storm, continue to kind of rattle off some wins here. Um, Orlando has been pretty solid this year, right? They're three and two, just like the Lakers. You're playing them on their home court. Uh, we just played them the other day. You know that they're going to be a team looking to to get that revenge and, and bounce back and get a win and end up being four and two. They're a team that's trying to to turn it around and go from you know uh, uh, missing the playoffs, playing team to actually being a legit playoff type of team that can maybe surprise somebody in the playoffs. Um, but anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel about uh, Gabe Vincent being out for two weeks? Do you think this is a point of concern? Do you think, nah, it's no big deal. We'll figure it out. It'll be okay. Um, we'll, we'll get through this. Just need guys to continue to step up. It's as simple as that, right? Austin Reeves, hopefully that was the turning point, what we saw uh, after he crossed over Norman Powell, and, and and you just saw kind of his confidence just shoot up, and you saw him kind of right the ship a little bit. Need to see that for a full game, because if Austin Reeves can kind of get back on track, then that's going to help tremendously uh, when Gabe Vincent being out. 
Uh, and then when he returns, you kind of figure it out from there. Um, but yeah, like I said, let me know your thoughts and opinions, whatever they are. I'd love to hear it down in the comment section below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me to enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Stay up to date with all things Lakers throughout the course of the season and for the future. But anyway, appreciate you guys. See you all in the next one. Thank you.